including Jeb Bush's controversial comments on the war in Iraq, those comments drawing fire from both Republicans and Democrats. Here's what he originally said in an interview with Fox News earlier this week. On the subject of Iraq, yep. obviously very controversial, knowing what we know now, would you have authorized the invasion? I would have, and so, so would have Hillary Clinton, just to remind everybody, and so would have almost everybody that was confronted with the intelligence they got. You don't think it was a mistake? In retrospect, the intelligence that everybody saw, that the world saw, not just the United States, was, um, was faulty. But the former uh, governor dialed back his comments when he called into Sean Hannity's radio show yesterday. I interpreted the question wrong, I guess. I was talking about, given what people knew then, would you have done it? rather than knowing what we know now. So in other words, if in 2020 hindsight, you would make a different decision? Yeah, I don't know what that decision would have been. That's a hypothetical, but the simple fact is mistakes were made. Republican presidential candidate Senator Rand Paul is joining us now live from Capitol Hill. I know he's a potential rival of yours for the Republican presidential nomination. Senator, what's your reaction to what uh, the former Florida governor, potential Republican presidential candidate, had to say about his brother, the war, and what he would have done knowing what he knows now? You know, I think it's a really important question, and I don't think it's just hypothetical, because we seem to have a recurring question in the Middle East whether or not it's a good idea to topple secular strongmen or secular dictators and what happens after that. You know, Hillary Clinton's war in Libya was the same kind of scenario. We toppled Gaddafi, a secular dictator, but we got chaos and the rise of radical Islam, and I think we're more threatened now. But I think the same was true of Saddam Hussein. I think Iran is now stronger and emboldened. In many ways, Iraq is sort of a vassal state to Iran. We worry about Iran getting a nuclear weapon. So I think we're a lot worse off with Hussein gone. There's a civil war going on there. We were also making a mistake, I think, to try to degrade Assad, because as we degraded the strongman Assad, ISIS grew. So I think there's a consistent theme here that every candidate should be asked, and that is, is it a good idea to go into the Middle East, topple governments, and hope that something better rises out of the chaos? Because recent history seems to show that, you know what, we're not getting something better, we're getting something worse. I guess the point uh, that, uh, the, uh, that Jeb Bush was trying to make, you're president of the United States in 2003, uh, the uh, vice president, the defense secretary, the CIA director, the secretary of state, they all come to you and they say, Mr. President, uh, our intelligence shows us that Iraq has stockpiles of weapons of mass destruction. Remember, this is not that long after 9-11. What do you do in a situation like this? You're president, you want to be president, and your intelligence community gives you a dire assessment like that. Now, we know, we know now what was wrong, but at the time, the president presumably believed that intelligence assessment. Well, the thing is, is we could also say the same for Assad until about a two years ago. He had stockpiles of chemical weapons. The question is their ability to use the weapons, their uh, proclivity to use the weapons, and also what comes after. You know, people have to ask this question. The first George Bush, you know, Jeb Bush's dad thought it would probably be a mistake. Dick Cheney thought it would be a mistake, ultimately or originally, to topple Hussein, that chaos would ensue afterwards. And sure enough, it still did happen. After Hussein was gone, the country's chaotic. It's more aligned with Iran. Iran is more of a threat. So, no, I think even at the time, invading Iraq was a mistake. And I thought the war, even at the time, was a mistake, given the intelligence. But now, I think that people should learn their lesson after the war in Libya. Everybody needs to be asked, all the Republicans should be asked, did you and do you support Hillary's war in Libya? And so I think as these questions get asked, we real, really get to the answer of who Republicans want to lead the country. Who do Americans want to lead the country? Someone who will perpetually get us involved in foreign war over there when the result is not to America's best interest, or someone who will be more reluctant. And I think that'll be one of our big debates over the next year. It certainly will be, because as you know, Senator, some of your Republican rivals for the presidential nomination, they accuse you of being an isolationist. You call yourself a non-interventionist, if you will. Under what circumstances, though, did you order the U.S. military to intervene in a foreign country? I think the most important thing is you obey the Constitution, and that says that the president doesn't unilaterally take the country to war. But I think right now ISIS is a threat to our embassy in uh, Baghdad as well as our consulate in Erbil. And I am for military action against them. 
but it should be done by Congress. And I also think that ultimately the, the war, the end of the war, the defeat of ISIS comes with Arab boots on the ground, not American boots on the ground. But I'm perfectly willing to have these debates because I think history's on my side. That every time we've toppled a secular dictator, things have been worse and America has been less safe. So it's not that I'm for no intervention. I'm just for less intervention than many of the hawks in this country, including some on both sides of the aisle. This is going to be a huge issue in the debates. I know that you have very strong positions on this. Uh, a quick question on North Korea, Senator, while I have you. Now, these reports, you've heard them, that uh, the uh, North Korean uh, leader, Kim Jong-un, has ordered the execution of the country's defense minister. Not only that, but in front of hundreds of people with anti-aircraft fire, if you will. What's going on over there? You know, I don't know that we all have the whole picture, but what we're hearing is horrific. And I think there's every evidence that we need to work with our allies, work with China, to see what we can do to get stability in, in North Korea. I think China still has a great deal of influence, more so than we have, and more so than anybody else probably in the region has. But this is a good reason for us to be working with China to try to get a good outcome, because I think it's not good to have, uh, you know, potentially mental instability uh, in, a, in a leader running a country with nuclear weapons. How's your campaign coming along, Senator? Very good, very good. Well, the best thing, I, the news I think that we have is that in purple states, battleground states, we're the only Republican leading Hillary Clinton, and I think that shows that we can be a winnable candidate. Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.